G'day and welcome back to Derriere Farms. Now that patch 1.3 is out, I thought it was time we dove back into our how-to series of videos where we take a look at how various aspects of the game work or specifically in today's case, how things work. Today's video is going to be about tractors, tires, and weights, and what works best. Now, I didn't want to dive into this video. I had started to do it a couple of weeks ago, and then I put it on pause, um, like I said, because we knew patch one point, yeah, try again in English, patch 1.3 was coming out, but we didn't know what was going to get changed. Now that the patch is out, we know certain things got changed, like the Case Magnum AFS Connect had its powertrain properly adjusted to power drive from CVT. Um, I believe it was you'd select power drive here, but it would still show up as CVT in the information screen. So that's an example of things that got fixed. There were, as expected, also some undocumented changes. And if you've watched my last video about undocumented changes, you'll know what I mean. I dug deep into the game files because I'm on a PC, I can do that. And I noted the date stamps on the various files for all sorts of things in the game uh, like buildings, production facilities, tractors, machinery and I noticed that for example all the combine harvesters the date stamp on that file is the 24th of February I would say probably 50% of the tractors have a date stamp of the 24th of February, meaning that something was changed to them. The other half is still date stamped from December's last patch. Or from when the game was first released. So we're not quite sure what exactly got changed. Um, there is that standard line in everybody's patch notes that says uh what is it called how do they phrase it exactly yes that's it the term is various changes and improvements to performance and behavior um like i said that could be anything from the amount of fuel it uses per hour um Although I, that's a fairly major one, so I suspect that would have been documented. Um, so, but it could be anything. So that's why I wanted to wait till we had a stable release of the game. One of the reasons I knew there were various undocumented improvements was I got notified... Um, by the bug tracker that my one of my issues had been resolved or two of them actually which was the grass on Erlingrand and the case sugarcane harvester were both reported to me as fixed in patch 1.3 yet apart while well, the grass in Erlingrand was mentioned there was nothing in the patch notes about the sugarcane harvester. I tested it out, watch my last video, and you'll see it's working perfectly now. And like I said, there was no peep or mention of that in the patch notes apart from under various improvements. That's because not a lot of people, I'm guessing it's because not a lot of people grow sugarcane because it tends to be very monotonous and takes a while to plant and takes a while to harvest 
kind of like potatoes. Um, I avoid potatoes like the plague because it takes so long. Uh, and prior to Farming Simulator 22, um, I avoided sugarcane like the plague for exactly the same reason. The only time I really did it was when um, it was introduced as a new crop in Farming Simulator 17. Astacia Lapacho, or however you pronounce that map. Um, the only reason I'm playing it now, or I, I reported it as a bug and found out about it, uh, is because it's part of the production train, and its supposed yield really boosts the amount of product you have to put into that production chain using very little land. Anyway. Regardless, back to the topic at hand, tractors, tires, and tracks. Now, I know this topic has been covered by two other YouTubers already <clears throat> in various versions of the game, and I'm not disputing their findings because they were very detailed and made sure all the parameters were the same. What I am disputing, or am, I won't say a little bit worried about, but makes me want to double check the fi their findings is, well, this is actually one of the tractors they used and they used it both for the wheel and the track version. As you can see, it's not really a fully tracked tractor. It's a half track. And the other video that was done, they used a combination, I believe, of the, this tractor. And no, that wasn't the class terror track. It was the the Fent. So they're using two different horsepower tractors. What the video proved to me, especially the one we're using the Fent, is um, you have different track setups. That's the engine setup. Sorry, you have different track setups. You have the wide and the standard. And they found no di real difference between that. Um, whereas with the AFS Connect, they found the wheeled version performed better than the half-tracked version. So I'm going to double-check their findings using the John Deere 8R series of tractors. So the 8R the 8RT and the 8RX. They all have the same class of engine and they're all built, assuming giants did their, well, if they did their math wrong on these, they probably did their math wrong on the other ones. But to me, this is as consistent as you get. You've got the wheel tractor in the same family as the track tractor and the, well, the unique track tractor. So we're going to test all three and see what the performance difference is on a slope. Now I'm not going to reinvent the wheel or build a brand new slope as I found a perfectly good one here on Obey Laurent. The first vehicle we're going to do is the John D. 8R410. And then we'll do the 8RT410 and the 8RX410. So basically the same engine package across the board. And that way we find out definitely whether it's the wheels or the tracks that affect the performance. And whether or not the new 8RT is better than the 8RX or the 8RX is better than the 8RT 
because that's a very unique track setup. I am thinking that this on a slope should beat the other. Well, hard to say. Only time will tell. The 8RT has tracks range stretching from the front to the back, whereas this is kind of a hybrid. Each one have their advantages and are marketed differently by John Deere. But they're also they all are the same horsepower packages. The testing parameter is fairly simple. Starting here at the edge of the field, they have to pull this cultivator, which is rated for 500 horsepower, and the tract is a 450 horsepower. They have to pull them all the way to the other side of the field. And I will stop and start them in exactly the same place, and we will time to see how long it takes. So as soon as I'm ready, I'm going to hit start on my stopwatch and set my cruise control and away we go. Ready, set, go. Wait, wait. Okay, that was hiccup number one, which was not lowering the cultivator. So ready, set, go. As you can see, even on this part of the field, this tract is struggling to keep it up around seven miles an hour. And the maximum speed I believe on this is, I'll have to check in a second. But I believe it is 12 miles an hour. Oh, it's really struggling now. There. Okay, so that took 39.17 seconds. That's a time to beat. So, let me try it the same way with dual wheels and narrow dual wheels, and then I will let you guys know what the findings are. Well, <clears throat> That kind of confirms what the uh, I already knew from my research and the other YouTube videos. The fastest with the dual wheels, all round duels, and the slowest at 39.17 seconds were wide tires with rear wheel weights. Um, you could actually see the front tires really kind of spinning. The rear ones weren't spinning too bad. So, coming in third, we had the narrow or the row crop dual tires at 35.11 seconds versus 32.91 for the, the dual all around regular duels. So, to set up number one, which was just the regular wide tires with weights, I added a front weight, which brought the time down from 39.17 seconds to 36.49. Ironically, the configuration you see here, with the weight on the front of the two duels, actually increased the time it took to climb the hill by one second. So I'm guessing the extra weight slowed the tractor down. So let me get the other two tractors and then I'll bring you guys back in. So here we are with the 8RT410, so 458, just like the other tractor. Uh, oh my, I gotta get my stopwatch ready. I'm lowered and let's go. And we're, it's already pulling faster than the uh, 
The other one did? Slowing down a little bit. Maximum speed of this cultivator is 11 miles an hour. And there we go. 27.64 seconds to get up that slope. Okay, let me go back to the base and I'm gonna try it with the weight and then with three meter tracks. Okay, so no surprises so far. Um, this is definitely performing kind of how I thought it would. The wide tracks were 27.64 seconds and these three meter narrow tracks were 30.9 seconds. And adding a front weight to it didn't help. It was 30.29 seconds. So pretty much with or without the front weight, it was the same speed. Let me take this back to the start and we will try the last track during the lineup. Not sure how I feel about this one, whether it's gonna win or not. Um, it's got about the same amount of tracked area on the ground as the other one does, but it's a heavier tractor for one and 30.95 seconds. So it's, yeah, it's three seconds slower than the 8RT. And I'll try it one more time. Well, we already know that the row crop tracks are going to make it slower but let's prove it and just to prove that I am open to testing all possibilities here we go I, w I just want to compare this one against the John Deere 8R with the wide tires and the wheel weights We already know that putting duels on it all around is the fastest option, the same as it is on the John Deere 8R. There we go. So 40 seconds. So even though it's what? For 20 horsepower less, it is 40 seconds slower. So yeah, that's probably the horsepower because they both had BKT tires. All right, so give me a second to put my thoughts together. So just as a comparison, um, I ran the same test on this field here, which is reasonably flat. It's got a slight, slight uphill, Not, nothing like the one that you see in the background there where we did the test and the 8R was the slowest by a second and a half and then the 8R 
X and the 8RT were about half a second apart from each other. So, uh, to me, that all, within a second, that all boils down to margin of error. So, obviously, it all boils down to surface area. Weight doesn't seem to play too much of a factor because the 8RX I did with both weights on and off and it came in 30.9, 31.05 and 31.86. So it came in again within a second of climbing that hill. That was uh, the slowest was with the 31.86 was with row crop tires on. Obviously, the wide tracks beat had the best performance. The same thing with the 8RT. Sorry, the 8RX and the 8RT. Wider tracks outperformed the row crop tracks same as dual wheels outperformed dual row crop wheels on the 8R and the wide tires with weights were the slowest they obviously have with only four tires the least amount of surface area to contact so you can't say that there was a the difference is horsepower because they're all the same horsepower I made sure of that when I tested with and without the weights I made sure that it was 1800 kilogram weight so the weights were the same the only difference is surface area and that is going up a hill if you're on flat land like this, a second or two is not going to make a difference. Um, so your duels on your 8R are definitely going to have an advantage over just the plain 8R. But it's going to be minimal. So you don't need to worry if you've got crop destruction on about running the 8R with dual narrows, your field is gonna get planted, plowed, whatever, at roughly the same speed. If you've got a hilly train, I would go for this. The 8RT is your best option in terms of surface area, because it's got the most area for the tracks not by much like I said the difference between the 8RT and this oh, wasn't sorry the 8RT and the 8RX wasn't that great um, you're within two or three seconds the 8RT like I said came in at 27.64 versus the 8RX at 30.9 um, three seconds uh, that's a big difference from the 10 second difference from the 8R just by itself and I just checked they were both they were all pulling the Vetastat Extreme 1425 which is a 450 horsepower cultivator which I guess is why they had absolutely no problems on flat ground but it shows you how much a hill can play a difference <clears throat> so like I said if you're playing on somewhere like Obey Laurent where uh, well the southern part of the map is fairly flat with the exception of field 25 which has a fairly decent slope going up that way um, I mean you wouldn't harvest or you wouldn't cultivate or plant these fields the way we cultivated it 
you would go side to side where it's a lot smoother and the hill doesn't play a, a role. Um, I know on Elm Creek I have an 8RT and I have two 8R410s. And I tend to, I use the 8RT for heavy tillage just because. Um, <clears throat> but I kind of got the, like I used to use it for hauling uh, grain carts. The thing I found was though, when I started using the 8R with the same horsepower at 410, it took it a second or longer to get up to speed, but because it's got a top speed of 31 I think it'll hit 31, maybe 32 miles an hour. It boogies across the field so you can get back and forth to the um, tractor trailer waiting at the bottom of a long field and you can get back to the combine fairly quickly. Um, they both reach their maximum speeds no problem. So, uh, like I said, I just use it because the... Um, 8R does 31, 32 miles an hour. So I use it for my grain carts, uh, my forage wagons, uh, anything that I want to move around quickly. <clears throat> if I was playing on Aubelarin here on more than just testing maps, I would probably rely, especially after this test, more on the 8RT. And as far as Erlingrat goes, well, the arable area or the farmable area is fairly flat. Um, it would just be if I wanted to rip up and reseed some of those grass fields that are in the hilly areas. Um, I would probably either buy or lease an 8RT to do it, or the case equivalent, so, well, there is really no case equivalent um but i was going to say because erlingrat is going to be or i'm building it up as a case farm so if you have any questions or you think i did something wrong sound off in the comments but otherwise i hope this helped you out and depending on the terrain you're going to be farming tracks are king but Tires shouldn't be dismissed. They work on for the most part, unless you got a big hill like that, they work fairly close to what the tracks do. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.